Hello everyone, this is Phil, and in this video I will be showing you some example solves with the ZZ method. And uh, just to get some preliminary stuff out of the way, I'm going to be generally talking about the F2L and the EO line. Uh, there's not much, you know, interesting stuff that happens in the uh, last layer. It's mostly algorithmic, and so I'll just be pointing things out that are interesting if uh, interesting things happen. And uh, the cube is a Zanchi. I've really done nothing to it. I just use it for casual solving. <clears throat> and uh, the scrambles will be in the description. So, uh, and because this is ZZ, I recommend that you uh, follow along with your own cube if you can't immediately grasp what I'm saying because sometimes it does get very abstract and when I'm pointing to where the wrong edges are, uh, if you need to know, sometimes it gets a little confusing because they're everywhere. And I can't show you the back of the cube simultaneously with the front. So. I've got uh, these two pieces here. These are my line pieces. Because I'm doing red front here, I hated blue, so I just wanted to do red. And uh, this is nice because I know that if I move this piece over here, uh, this piece will be here, so my F turn can force the piece to be opposite of this piece. And that's a very important concept to know with ZZ, is how to force your EO line pieces to be opposite after you finish your uh, EO line. Uh, that's, I guess, the second best thing that can happen. Of course, the best thing is that they're solved after you orient. And uh, that's kind of rare, but that does happen if you get a good scramble. Uh, otherwise, you just hope that they're opposite, and then you can kind of solve them with a D-move. And when you're using the D-move, uh, you can look at the top two layers, which will be unchanged. So I've got four on edges, two here and two here. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these over here, bring my wrong edge over here, and unfortunately, you know, this is not going to help very much, but I do have, uh, I, I, I can do this, which will uh, give me my EO line, and then I can do this pair. Uh, and I noticed, like, uh, this piece is over here, and just doing the pair like this uh, it looks nice at first, but then you realize it's stuck to this, and that kind of sucks, so I'm just going to solve this and work around it like that. And I get this, which was totally inadvertent. So I'm going to insert it. And I notice this. And my slots don't open here. And there's really nothing I can do with the slot. I was hoping that, you know, the pair would be paired together and that I can just put it in the slot and close it. But I have to move it out of the way, the three move insert, close the slot, and then reinsert. And this is, um, oops. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this one's an easy one for blue. There are three wrong edges in the front, one wrong here and two wrong in the back. So I'm going to do uh, three into one into three. And whenever you have three wrong in the front here like this and you have six in total, it's pretty much an invitation to do three into one into three. So I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> and instead of just doing R2U to group them in the back, which is totally possible, uh, but it, you know, it's not good because this piece will swing either way and this piece is already solved and so that, that's, that's not too great. Uh, instead what I'm going to do is U2 R U prime B, B prime. And that'll solve this piece. So this is the case where you orient and solve at the same time. And like I said, that's kind of rare because you need to get your line edges in these two positions here. Uh, but it does happen, and it's uh, I think it's preferable over just solving it and then realizing one edge is solved, but the other one is not. So uh, now I have this pair over here. And then I can solve this. And uh, I noticed I can pair these two. And I know once I solve this, this pair will be, well, this corner piece will be here. And I'd much rather have uh, this edge be here because then it would just form a pair. So I'm going to hide this, put it in, and then solve it. This is an anti soon, and my antivirus is popping up. All right. All right, so uh, this one's really easy. I've got four wrong in the front, and uh, this is another case where you would solve them as you're orienting. Um, and, you know, I know I said that's rare, but it is happening twice in a row. Uh, it doesn't happen to me very much when I, uh, 
you know, just solve and solve and continuously. So I'm going to solve the orientation of these four and then slot the one in the back. Unfortunately, this pair was broken up. There was really nothing I can do about it um, because this EO line was so short. But I can attach this piece to this piece like this and then attach it to this piece like that. And I'm going to solve this piece. And I know, I know when I solve this square over here, uh, this piece will be shot down here, and then I can pair it with this. So immediately after I do R2, I'm going to do a U2, and then insert this pair. I hope that makes sense. And then this one goes with this one, and this is a CLS case. You just repeat these four moves, and it does OLL for you. All right, so this one's really horrible for uh, for blue. So I'm gonna do red, and there are four wrong edges in the back, two wrong here and two wrong here. So I'm gonna hold it with the uh, yellow front, and I'm going to use an M move to reassign my front as red, uh, like so. And over here, I know that notice that these two are opposite. So I'm going to solve the EO line opposite, and do a D2 to solve the EO cross. Now I have this. And then I have this. And I know that once I insert this pair, this corner piece will be pointing this way. And that'll allow me to L U prime L prime and pair this one. And that will kick this piece out. And I know this piece is in here because it's not on here, obviously. And so uh, it's, uh, I don't know where this will go, but that's where I'm gonna be looking, so. And now it's fairly obvious it's gonna be attached to this so I can pair and I know because of this block that it's going to skip all right I was just curious about red blue is really straightforward so um, I can make an EO cross here so I'm gonna put these two pieces over here this is the other wrong edge and there's one down here so and then nudge this piece over and solve the EO cross like that. And here I can multi slot these two and these two. Um, it's not so much of like, you know, a special algorithm to multi slot, but I know exactly where things are going to go. I know this piece is going to move over here. I'm going to move it back, pair it with this piece using, you know, the lefty L prime U L trigger and then. R prime U to R to insert it in the back. So like this, and this sets up a CLS pair so I can do this. And uh, this case is really good because this is just a regular insert. It's just sexy move at insertion. And this is a G perm with a U to a, sorry, a U, a U F misspoke there. That was actually a really good solution. I like that. Um, all right, so red is much better here. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, orient. There's three in the back here, three in the front, and two over here. So all I need to do is put these two over here. Now I have four wrong back, four wrong front. And then I'm simply going to do this. And I have a pair here and a pair here. So I'm going to insert the two pairs like that. And I can connect this and pair it up like that. And then I know my last pair is going to be like that. And this is COLL and UPERM. OK, so this is really good for red. Um, so I have four wrong in the back and one wrong here. So I'm just going to do this to solve three fourths of a cross. And now I have these two. So, and then I know that this one's going to be attached to this one so I can keep going. And over here, I can keep going. And then I know this pair is going to be like that. I'm going to do anti soon, and this is a G perm.
Okay, so uh, red is okay. Blue is okay. I'm going to do blue. Uh, when they're both okay, I just do blue because my block building skills are a little better with blue simply because I've been doing blue longer. So I'm going to put this one over here to, to give myself three. And of course, this line edge will be uh, in a solving ready position like that. And then I'm simply going to just slot this so that I can uh, make the EO line. It's not the best way to do it, but there was nothing that I can do uh, in the moment to make it better. So I have this connected to this, this pair going in, and I can further do that. And uh, this is the really bad case um, <laughs> because uh, it's um, this uh, T case, but with uh, H perm. So I actually don't, I don't do it. Um, what I do is I do this COLL and then I predict the uh, the U perm that comes right after it. And because I know whenever I get the T case with H perm, I just do that. Um, you know, I think the algorithm's okay for uh, two-handed solving, but I don't really do two-handed solving, and it's really bad for one-handed. Um, the algorithm that I used um, when I was convinced that it was worth it was I had a lot of R2s and Us, and I just didn't like that. So, all right. Anyway, enough complaining. I've got uh, three wrong in the back for blue here, and uh, three wrong here, so it's a six case. And just like I, I said, as I said earlier, when there are three wrong on a face and you have six, it's it's an invitation to do three into one to three. So I'm gonna do exactly that. So for EO line, and uh, here it's a pretty simple cross. You just do this to form the cross, and then I have a three move insert here, and then I can solve the rest of the block using that, and then I can pair these and pair this one in the back. And this is a perm. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. Hope that was uh, enjoyable, informative, educational, and uh, you know, a lot of uh, ZZ stuff is really interesting because you can build all sorts of funny stuff in the F2L. There's not really a structure. You can leave the slot open, which is something that you can't afford to do as much in CFOP. I've seen it done before, but. Uh, it's very rare. It's actually considered a technique in ZZ, so it's common enough where people actually, you know, document it and do it actively. So uh, it's a really interesting thing to do. And sometimes if you leave the slot open, your next pair that fills in the slot will automatically be solved, and then you can just, uh, you know, save yourself the moves and the inconvenience of opening and closing the slot. So again, hope that was useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and I'll be doing more example solves as my style and my understanding of the method evolves um, either for the better or for the worse. So I again, hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.